Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hi. Sean. I'm Bert. And our channel is now called... Pastory Time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> what are we doing today, Bert? We are doing a book haul. Mm. Yeah. And before we do a book haul, mm. um, maybe you could let um, the people know how you're non-fiction November or your nov nov novellas in the member is going it's going very well thank you how's yours going not so great not so great yeah. Sean's hit a wall and has decided yeah. to quit reading forever i might just stop reading yeah. yeah yeah i'm enjoying it i i um have lots of books on the go at the moment which is something that usually gives me a bit of like anxiety but i'm enjoying it so i've got an okay. audio book i've got short stories i've got a non-fiction book and i've got a novella okay um which wasn't the plan but um it's fine. I have a slight thing of um, getting a pile of books together, getting really excited about them, and then not wanting to read them. Yeah, so I, I think, think it's because you you stare at the pile for days. Yeah, and get really excited, get and then bored. it's just yeah. And I'm struggling a bit with novellas, like reading them one after the other. I've read three. Well, you've enjoyed them all, though, haven't you? I have. I've read three and I've oh, enjoyed it's... them, but I, they're so quick that I then have to I have to keep making that decision of what I'm reading next. That's the fun and I'm not. Part, isn't it? I find it quite stressful. Right. So what are you going to do? Just give up reading. Just give up reading. <laughs> just give up reading. Oh well. <laughs> you'll just have to take over the channel. You'll be reading by... You'll just be called Bertie Reads. You'll be reading by this afternoon. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I have read one, two, three, and four, plus you've five. got all these I've new books. I've read six books this, this November. <laughs> so it's, not like... it's a crisis. But the last two days, yeah. today and yesterday, I've yeah. kind of not known what to... I can't settle yeah. on anything. It's tough times over here. Yeah, tough yeah. times with the Lalpa Story household. It's, it's a big deal. Anyway, our haul. Do you want our to start haul. the haul? Do I? No, we do start because you've okay. got more. So, um, I used to subscribe to Fairy Loot. Yeah. Um, and I got it every month. Um, and it's a young adult fantasy subscription box. Um, and... Unfortunately, you don't like young adult fantasy. I don't so... like... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I really wanted a, a subscription box, but there's not... Yeah. I, there's not one in the UK that I can find that is quite what I want. Mm. I, I think Fairy Loot is actually really good because they have lots of little gifts in it, and they always they're always vegan as well. So all their if they put yeah. like um, and this last box was great. The last box yeah. was really good. So it was a vampire themed one. Yeah. It had a hat which says "Bite Me" on it. Oh. Which I'm really excited to wear. Yeah. Um, it had some coasters. Mm. It had vampire a candle. Coasters. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what else, but it was all. It's perfect. Oh, I had a really great. I've forgotten. To, haven't been using it. I had a really great um book. Uh, <coughs> book protector thing. Oh yeah, your book bag. Yeah, book, yeah. yeah. I can't remember where I put that. Oh really? I look for that. Anyway, the Somewhere. book in it was *The Beautiful* by Renee Adler, um, and this is a vampire book set in 1872 in New Orleans. Mm. So I'm very excited about it. It's got red you edges. You love a New Orleans setting as well. I do, yeah. yeah. And um, I like sort of, I like in vampire stuff when the vampire goes back to his or her origin story. And you have to go back in time to... Yeah. yeah. So good. Especially in films. Yeah, or like in An when Angel goes back. Yeah. Um, and they just have to, put and a, wig to do an a wig and yeah. an accent. Yeah. yeah. So this one is signed. And then the sl the cover, oh, yeah. you can take it off. Get ready. <laughs> and sorry, <laughs> is that a big laugh? <laughs> <laughs> and you've got this um, inside, um, <coughs> which I kind of love, hate. It's enjoyable. Though, yeah, think, isn't it? it's, it's a enjoyable. Good idea. Like, yeah, but like all the artwork for these for the young adults have always looks like this, doesn't it? Yeah, it's the same kind yeah. of style. Isn't all it? All different people, but exactly the same artwork. Yeah, yeah. They all look very clean. Yeah. Don't they? So it's not particularly jaws. to my taste, no. but I do enjoy it yeah. as well. Yeah. So I think this is going to be good. I think so too. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to it. It's everything you want. Yeah. Um, shall I go? I, yeah. Um, so Sean has treated me to some books <laughs> oh, um, yeah. this month. Which is very kind of her. Do you want to explain why, oh, why been, I got treated? I've been ill, so I'm still coughing a bit. cough. And um, we were meant to go... Last time we did a video, we talked about how we were going to go and watch the craft in the castle. Yeah, we were going to go watch the craft in the crypt. Yeah. And go and eat uh, a greasy vegan. Yeah, yeah, and then I was too ill. I was, like, really wanting to go. Yeah, she was waiting for But said I wasn't allowed. <laughs> so then we just we just did it here instead. Yeah. So we put the craft on and we got takeaway so greasy vegan. Great. Also, Possibly it was like, better than going Yeah, because it was like an incredibly rainy night yeah, horrible, as well. Yeah. So, and we got to have burgers and yeah. watch the craft. Mm. Anyway, yeah. there was also, and I'd already paid for the tickets, mm. and then you'd already paid for some tickets to go and see a band. Yeah. And then I was too old to go to that. Mm. So you went. I went by myself and just found. 
<laughs> and I brought you some books to make up for it. Yeah, I thought <laughs> my book is open. I said, you can have £20. <laughs> oh. So I just went a bit wild and, um, and got some point horrors. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to try and focus on this Nightmare Hall series at the moment because um, I really enjoyed The Roommate um, in this series. And I think they're all by uh, Diane Ho. But this one is uh, Sorority Sister and Deadly Attraction. Deadly Attraction, I like the look of because it's got these scissors. I think someone's going to like be cutting up some clothes at some point because uh, I think this is a bit of uh, a stalkery. Why stalkery. Do you say? I think she starts dating like the big man on campus, Robert Q, and then he dumps her, but she won't let it go. Okay. You know, as women always with, do. With, <laughs> with women there. Um, and. Sorority Sister, yeah, so it's set in the Omega Phi Delta, which is like the, the cool <laughs> sorority, like the really popular uh, yeah. girls. But um, it says that one of them is crazy. Um, they're determined to destroy the house and everyone in it. So it sounds really good. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I kind of really enjoy sorority stuff. Yes, me too. Because I don't know, like, we don't have sororities. No, no. And, and I don't in know my how mind, I... I still see them as quite 90s. <laughs> yeah, I don't so. even know, like how they relate to what I know from TV. No, no idea. No. <laughs> but uh, this has got some ants climbing around a ring on it. Yeah. So, who knows? Who knows what that scene will be? <laughs> but it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. I've got two yoga books. Mm. The first one I pre-ordered back in May, and it yeah. came out in September. Yeah. And I've just got it today. Amazing. Um, Sean Corn. Yeah, Revolution of the Soul by Sean Corn. Awaken to Love Through Raw Truth. Oh, Radical healing and conscious action. And big hair. She's fabulous. She yeah. always looks amazing. Yeah. She's in her 50s, I think. She's amazing. And then um, I always really like what she says. She is, because she does, oh, she puts raw truth. But she's been kind of a bit more political and kind of um, has this whole thing about taking yoga off the mat. And I've got, you know, that t shirt which is about like yoga is, and yeah. it's, uh, that's her. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of says like yoga's, yoga is human rights, gay rights, that yeah. kind of stuff. So she's. Great, yeah. And on the, it's it's um I think it's I mean I only got today. Haven't we really looked at it? It looks really good. I think. Yeah. yeah. I think it's kind of a mixture of memoir, or uh, like a memoir through yoga, I guess. Yeah. So like a little bit that of. Sounds about, really good. Yeah. I think so. And Sally Fields is um has got a little blurb on there. Yeah. She says Sean Corn is a gift. Yeah. And do you want to explain what Sean Corn means in Welsh? Well, if you <laughs> if you're in Wales, <laughs> Sean Corn it would be spelt the same but yeah. pronounced differently. It's Father Christmas. Father Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> It's themed reading yeah. and as we approach yeah. December. Yeah. yeah, so that's that. Yeah. And then the other yoga one I've got, which you found, is Yoga uh, and Money for Life by Naomi Anand. Um, this one's a bit more kind of coffee table. I but, think so. But yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? But it and I love the spine. Just, yeah, like on those naked spines. Yeah. Um, it says it's ideal for total beginners to more experienced yogis. So it's one that has like, um, you know, poses in it. I do that but then it does have lots of just kind of like nice instagrammy stuff yeah nice pictures and kind of other text i think it's really well. good i think and so you will I think read I'm it gonna, really. yeah you usually read them from start to finish yeah and it's sometimes quite nice to read those kind of more glossy books as yeah, well isn't we, it oh, we maybe that's a, what i should I'm read saying today. we need to get a coffee table so we can put them on yeah we, we don't, don't really have we don't really have a, a space for, for that. <laughs> no maybe we'll look for one so i got um St. Peter's Wolf. This is by Michael Cadnam. Um, and it's a early 90s um, werewolf story. I don't know very much about it other than it's um, supposed to be a kind of uh, an interesting take on the werewolf trope. Um, and it's also kind of romance in there as well. Um, nice. Yeah. I feel like it's everything you need. I think so. It sounds like a kind of a three characters kind of trying. So I think it's about a couple and then they meet this... Um, a mysterious collector called Jacob Zinzer, Zinza, and I think he kind of turns one of them into a werewolf okay. or something like that. But I love the cover. I didn't know this I, was going to come with this cover. No. Oh yeah, different one. Didn't yeah, it? I like the bit on the back where it says Saint Peter's Wolf. I just found this quite a confusing, interesting sentence. All right. Saint Peter's Wolf is the terrifying story of lovers caught in a world where the ultimate freedom, created by total power and unbridled lust, battles against the remorse of a trapped soul. Yeah. Because I'm even like stuck on that ultimate freedom created by total power and bridal blood. It's a very long sentence. But what is yeah. that ultimate? We'll, I'll, I'll, I'll find out and <laughs> let you know. Okay. Yeah. 
I feel like it's going to be really good, though. It's a howling good horror story. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still kind of in the horror mode that I started in in October, so yeah. I'm going to keep going with it, or at least keep buying the books, and then when I fancy reading them next yeah. year, even I will read them. Yeah. I mean, we regularly discuss like what's better, werewolf or vampire, don't we? Yeah, I prefer werewolves. I really like the whole. <laughs> I like the whole transformation thing. Yeah, I like that whole, too. I like the whole sort of full moon. Yeah. And also so that thing of also maybe not knowing that you're a werewolf. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. wake up and you're not sure. Yeah, and you wake up naked under a yeah. bush. Yes. Yeah. And I like. I really like the um, the Jack Nicholson film. Yeah. Wolf. Yeah. And that's a lost. That classic. is good. It's a lost it? classic. Michelle yeah. Pfeiffer. I like how his his hair starts to grow back, doesn't it? Yeah, and he can smell like sort of. So he's working in like a publishing office, book publishers, and uh, he can smell alcohol in someone's breath, like in another sort of uh, yeah a cubicle. And he like phones him and says, "I know what you've been drinking this morning." And it's got like, James Spader in. James Spader. <laughs> yeah. I What's think your I'm... favorite werewolf? Uh, oh um... well, I I like um, American Werewolf in London. Do you know what I also yeah. like as well is the um, that Angela Carter one that there's made into a. Oh yeah, what's it called? It's called the Children of. <coughs> the I Children remember. Of yeah. <coughs> I remember. <coughs> Sorry, yeah. I remember the scene where they cut they cut the whale's head off and then it turns into a person. Yeah, I yeah. That. that's quite a scary film. Though, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, But I love Angela Carter. Yes. We don't discuss her enough. No, as I, much I, we don't I, discuss Angela Carter as much as we discuss whether we prefer no, werewolves well, or vampires. I have less knowledge of Angela <laughs> Carter than. Is it Twilight? So it's quite um, a choice, isn't it? As well. Yeah, again, I would go werewolf. Yeah, there's that bit, I feel that I may have gone, with maybe going too far here, but mm. there's that bit in the film, when they're on the top of that mountain in that tent, and, and Edward, the vampire, can't keep her warm. Yeah. So they have to get the werewolf in. Yeah. And that bit is the only bit that makes me think that maybe I'd prefer werewolves, <laughs> because they'd be really warm. Yeah, but then he says something like, I'm hot. <laughs> like that. Anyway. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah, gracefully. <laughs> to The Beauty of Everyday Things by Saitsu Yanagi. Um, this looks good. It does look really lovely. Yeah. This so is for that reading group. Yeah, so it's a little book, so I just thought, uh, yeah, I was going to show it against another book without spoiling what the next book is. Mm. So it's smaller than a regular book. It's tiny. But the font is quite big. So, yeah. And um, so when is this from, actually? You could add it to your design. Yeah, or for end of design. Yeah, design books. It says 2017, but maybe that's just first published here mm. because the um, the guy who wrote it died in 1961. He he lived 1889 to 1961. It said he was a philosopher, art historian, aesthete, aesthete, oh, and poet. Yeah. yeah, he evolved a theory of why certain objects made by unknown craftsmen are so beautiful became the founding father of the Japanese folk crafts minge movement. He helped establish him as the first direct director of the Japan Folk Crafts Museum. Wow. Yeah, so I'm kind of um, looking forward to this. I've seen mm. I've seen other books on this, uh, like Art and Design Penguin Classic series, and yeah. they all look really interesting. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's a, a new reading group that a friend of mine um, has set up, and I'll link it as well if you're in Cardiff. But it's like a design reading group. Mm. Um, and I just thought that was really interesting because... You know, I haven't really read that many yeah. design books. And this is, um, he sort of mixes his notion of zen oh, and, and design. Yeah. So out of what he looked like, he might be a bit of a zen. Yeah. yeah I mean, the stuff like art, the like Japanese pottery, it's kind of mm. really fascinating as well. Yeah. So, yeah. That looks yeah, great. So yeah. It does look good. Um, yeah. Um, <coughs> so another kind of horror novel. This is a ghost story. This is from 1977. Sweetheart, Sweetheart by Bernard Taylor. So this is another book on the Valancourt Press um, series, and they sort of they do lots of reissues. Um, so I've got some that are non sort of genre ones from like the fifties and sixties, but they do a lot of the sort of seventies, eighties horror as well. Um, I know that um, this is considered to be a bit of a masterpiece of sort of the ghost story, okay. a bit of a lost classic. Um, and Hey Little Thrifter, I think, read this one and loved it. And I think she may have read some of the others. I know she's recently read The um, More Stone Sickness by him as well and really liked that one. So he's an author that I've been intending to read for ages and I thought I'd start with this one because I think it's kind I of... I think I'd quite like to try that one as well. Yeah, it sounds really good. I mean, um, I don't read, but if I did, I would... If you were reading again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's in our house. Yeah. So you, you can read it. Anytime. I could. Yeah. 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 
it's a bit of a weird well, do you know, feeling of book. I, I, I mean, the design isn't slightly... nice, is it? No, I like that they... I think this would have been like the original original cover. I think they tend to re reissue them with the original cover, but I just kind of think the design of it isn't... It's shiny. It's a bit shiny. font looks a little bit kind of clip arty. And then look mm. at that there. Yeah, I know. They've I kind of... You that. can't really see that, yeah. but there's just... They put the price, like, over... In the little box, over the blurb. Yeah. So you can't read it. It's an error. I mean, like, it wouldn't happen on this. It wouldn't. He wouldn't approve. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Dead Girls by Abigail Tartalin, which mm-hmm. Bert bought me because I was sick. Yeah. Yeah. When Sean gets, gets poorly, she gets a young adult book. So I've got a young adult yeah. book. Yeah. Set in 1999, I think there's like a, a murdered girl. Yeah. And then someone is going to go, and one of the other girl is going to try and solve the murder. I think so. It's, I think she's supposed to be really good. And yeah. I follow her on um, Instagram. <laughs> and, yeah. I really like her. And Golden Boy she was supposed Golden to be really Boy. good. Golden Boy. That had yeah. quite good reviews, didn't it? Yeah. Emma Flint. Oh, yeah, wrote Little Death, so that she liked it. Mm. Um, and she wrote Flick as well. I don't know yeah, that I one. Yeah, that was her first one. Okay. That's that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so in our last um, wrap-up, yeah. not all, wrap-up, um, I had read um, a Margaret Miller book, which was um, Banish in an Instant. So I got myself this one. Um the Listening Walls, because I'm quite excited that they're reissuing her books. She's brilliant, um, sort of 50s, I think this is another 50s one. Uh, yeah, 1959. Um, and it's set in uh, Mexico City and San Francisco. I'm not entirely sure what the plot is, but it's kind of a detective uh, mystery. And I, 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 at this time of year, I'm really into crime, reading yeah. sort of crimes, and especially like vintage and sort of pulp. Noir. Mm. Um, there's just something about it that gets gets a bit darker and yeah. it's quite cosy. I think that's part of what my issue is at the moment is that mm. I sort of want something I can a little bit kind of curl up and just get completely yeah. absorbed in, which I don't yeah. think necessarily nonfiction or novellas no, do. No, true. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's why I'm kind of struggling a bit. Yeah, although a lot of these books are quite short. Yeah, they're not really yeah. novellas or like not deliberately. Yeah. So yeah, I think this is. Like, I really like this era of um, crime because I think it's that point after sort of the Agatha Christie sort of type crime novels where it became very psychological. So the psychological thriller uh, sort of uh, character based sort of novels started coming through. Yeah. And I find them really interesting because they're actually quite, quite sort of dark, but they have this surface of being quite light. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be great. I really like her. I've got um, Initiated. Uh, a memoir of a witch by Amanda Yates Garcia, mm. which is a memoir of yeah. her life as a um, as someone that practices wit- witchcraft, which it says her mother um, initiated her into. At the back is lovely as that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, um, it's blurbed by Francesca Leah Block and also Michelle T. Mm. So I feel it's just like yeah, you'd be silly not to get that. Yeah, one, you just got to get it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. If Francesca and Michelle tell you to. Yeah. Uh, I saw this on our friend Gosia um, had bought it. She put it mm. on her Instagram. And Gosia has uh, self-published a, a book, book as a, today as her birthday she? present to yeah. herself, which she said she was going to do years ago. I said, "Oh my, is it thirtieth birthday or something?" Thirty first. Thirty first birthday. She said, "I'm going to publish a book." So and yeah, she's. We'll link it uh, yeah. below. She's fabulous, and I think it's kind of part memoir, part essay, yeah. a bit of fiction. And she did a writing course with Ariel Gore, and yeah. Ariel Gore has blurbed the back of yeah. her self-published book. So yeah. I think that's amazing. It is amazing. So, um, yeah, we'll link it, and then when we get it, we'll show you. Yes. And I'm sure it's going to be great, because gosh, yeah, it's great. Yeah. 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 And what else? Yeah, so that looks great, it doesn't does look it? Amazing. I'm really excited about that one. Um, finally, for me, um, <laughs> this James Salis novel is his latest one, just come out this year. It's called Sarah Jane. I love these no-exit press editions. They're just really nicely designed. Um, so this, he, I don't know if you know James Silas, he's a contemporary sort of kind of crime writer. He wrote um, the novel of Drive, which they then turned into a film, which I haven't seen. Yeah. But he does, kind of, he's kind of quite, um, quite gritty, quite noir, contemporary noir novels, sort of that are sort of nod to a lot of the uh, sort of older 50s and 60s kind of noir, Chandler, um, Goodis, and those kind of authors. Um, and he, but they feel kind of modern. Um, and I think he's just one of the best writers, one of my favourite writers around at the moment. And yeah, I met him when I uh, I organised like a reading for him in in Cardiff, and he's just such a great guy. He was lovely, wasn't he? And it? he plays kind of uh, in a blues kind of blues. I think it's like ragtime blues kind of band as well. Um, he's just really charming, and I really look forward to all of his novels because he 
kind of dissects the genre quite a bit as well. So his books are never what you expect. Really intelli- intelligent as well. Really intelligent. They? Really unexpected. <laughs> I've read one. I mean, but it, that was yeah. really intelligent. Yeah. So yeah, and I like that it, he sort of has changed his focus. A lot of his more recent books have been uh, have like female protagonists in a kind of quite what is traditionally quite a masculine okay. kind of genre. Um, so yeah, this is uh, Sarah Jane. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that one. Is that your last book? Yes. And my last book is This is Pleasure by Mary Gateskills. This is the new novella, which mm-hmm. I have read mm. and I loved. Yeah. Um, and I want everyone to read it so that we can talk about it openly. Yes. <laughs> Without spoiling it. it. So Bert's going to read it. Mm. Um, you can actually read it for free online. Um, it was in the New York Times, possibly. Okay. or I can't remember. Mm. I'll, I'll link it anyway. Um, this is like a, a Me Too novella. Yeah. And it's told from two perspectives. So told from one, which is this guy who's kind of this older guy. And he's kind of going through his whole career uh, in that kind of what he considers flirting. Yeah. Yeah, old, old school. Old this school. Is how we used to do yeah. It. Old school slap on the ass yeah. kind of. Yeah. It's fine. So he's thinking it's flirting. And then yeah. um, there's all of the people that work in the office have kind of got together and slapped a sexual harassment case on right, him okay. I, I mean it's never actually completely explained what the mm. charges are but it's yeah. yeah um and then it's also told from the point of view of his friend who's a woman and about her feelings towards that case right. it's really interesting yeah it kind of goes to um the woman who i guess you might think i suppose you go in it thinking maybe the woman is mary gates girl or mm. or not you don't think she's very gay skill, but, but she's you think that's that, yes. that side of yeah. the story. But actually, the woman is a little bit apologising for the guy, mm. and um, so there's been mixed reviews of people saying that they don't like that. Yeah, but I kind of feel it's beyond that a little bit. It's not. Yeah. I don't I feel think like Mary Gates School kind of likes to go that next step. Yeah. and like challenge the reader yeah. to sort of question what the characters are doing. Yeah, almost. like that's... she divides people yeah. on purpose. Doesn't yeah. She? Because it's like that, um, you know, when I was reading, it's like, well, I know, I'm reading the guy's thing, and I know that the guy's awful, yeah. and it kind of, I was reading the woman's thing, and it's like, how is that woman doing, you know, yeah. I think that the woman is going to represent me as well, yeah. and yeah. and she does, you know, I don't agree with the woman, yeah. so it's kind of that kind of slightly confusing, oh, okay, so yeah. maybe I'm not going to like the woman either, Yeah. Now, why am I, why did yeah. I go in there thinking that yeah. the woman is going to be... Read a novel where you're not, like told what to yeah you know what characters are good and what the bad yeah and like, you know like you have to look at it as a realistic kind of situation yeah it felt like quite yeah. real that yeah they're, because they're both kind of older as well yeah. and i think a lot of these conversations yeah. are conversations that a lot of older people yeah. have, have had and have, yeah it's interesting and i think you just have to yeah like you said like put your trust in that she's doing something knowingly yes rather than sort of being disappointed in her for not representing you necessarily. Yes. Um, she's like adding to the, the discussion in a way yeah. that's kind of unexpected. Maybe. Yeah. So the, yeah, and it's like that thing of the narrator isn't the character. Yeah. Which yeah. is hard to, it's really hard separate, to separate yourself from, isn't it? Yeah. I'm interested to read it. See what yes. I think as well. Let me know if you read yeah. it. And that's everything. Sorry for coughing. Thank you which for is watching. Why I say every day. Oh, <laughs> I'm used to it. I don't even hear it anymore. Sean is coughing and not reading anymore. <laughs> so tune in. And to moaning the... in my sleep. <laughs> you don't know the, the croaking noises I've had to help him. Ah, ah. Mm. Oh, Poor Sean. I know. Send her some love in the comments. Yeah. Yeah. I'll save my shoulder issues for another day, maybe. Yeah, we'll discuss that another time. <laughs> okay, see you soon. Let us know Thank if you've you. read any of these. Yes. <laughs>